Okay, Preco 10. Uh, so here is a video lesson about um, relations and functions. So essentially how we can plot uh, dots, lines, uh, waves, whatever, on a two-dimensional grid, an X, Y, what we call Cartesian plane. So this is your Cartesian plane. It's made up of two axes, your X axis and your Y axis. And those make up our two dimensions. We have to move left, right along the X axis before we can move up, down along the Y axis. But all of our points exist with coordinates X comma Y. So it means that in order to exist on that grid, you need to have a, a point in space along the left and right, the X. So in this case, let's say four, and then a point in space on the up, down, so two. Where does that exist? That exists from this middle point right here is zero, zero. That's what we call the origin. You haven't moved left, right, or up, down. So to get to two, four, we just move over four, up two, our point is right there. Obviously we don't draw the lines. I'm just showing sort of like the trip. So we have, uh, I'll put it in there too, zero, zero's on there, four twos on there, negative three comma five. Well, that would be negative three in the X direction. So this way, and then up five. So it exists right there. Right, so all of these points, we did this in grade 9, we're plotting so that there would be uh, negative 7 along the x, negative 2 along the y, right, so we need an x and a y coordinate. Anything that exists on this two-dimensional plane is called a relation. It is a relationship between an x coordinate and a y coordinate. Now obviously it goes a little bit deeper than that, but that is it, it's most basic. So. Um, we can map relations in a number of different ways. Basically, it depends on what you have on the grid. So you can see there's two grids here. The one on the left, I'm going to just do some points, okay? So we'll put a point there. 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 So if you want to list these points as ordered pairs here, the top one, well, it's what are their x, y's that we were just looking at. So here we're at negative 5, comma, 7. So as ordered pairs, we have the relationship negative 5, comma, 7. This one here, we have uh, 0, comma, 3. This one here is uh, 5, comma, negative 3. And then this one here is negative 5, comma, negative 5. So you can list your points as ordered pairs, those are relations, but you can also list points that connect a line. So if we had, um, let's say, a point here, and a point here, and a point here, and they made up a line, we can list those points in a table. So it's for every x value, what is y, which is, again, essentially your ordered pairs. This is point one comma negative two. So how that looks in a table is when X is one, Y is negative two. Uh, for this one, we have coordinates two comma one. So when X is two, Y is one. And then for this one, we have what? Uh, three comma four. So in your table, it means when x is 3, y is 4. So you can list these things in a number of different ways. Mapping notation, you basically have, like, say, an oval here. These are your x's, and these are your y's, and you have the values. So in this case, we'd have 1, 2, 3, and then we'd have negative 2, 1, 4, and it just shows what maps to what. And you'll see that there's a piece there that changes what makes you a relation, a function, or a one-to-one -one function, but we'll get to that in a couple slides. Last thing on this page is what we call the independent and dependent variable. So the independent variable is x, almost always. And we say x-axis is our independent axis, whereas y is going to be y values and the y-axis is our dependent. Now what does that mean? Well, I'm just gonna erase the grid here on the right. It means that um, you need to think about uh, plotting some units on here, for instance. So a good one is the y-axis is t uh, money and the x-axis is time. So just think about your hourly wage, right? Like if you work zero hours, you make zero dollars. If you work five hours, you make you know a certain amount of money. The amount of money you make depends on depends on time. 
Time is independent, doesn't care about anyone, right? Time does its thing. So you have what's called an independent variable and a dependent variable. More often than not, you'll see that the independent one uh, represents um, money, or sorry, uh, time of some sort. But you can have other things too. You'll see examples uh, in the workbooks and the, the practice to come. So when you think relations, it's important to think about inputs versus outputs. So what you put in, what you get out, and that relates directly to the um, independent dependent variables. So if you look at the equation of slope intercept form, right, remember this from grade nine, we put into an X and we can solve for a Y. So X is our input and what we get out is our output. And you can pick as many different things as you want because you have this example or this equation, Y equals two X plus one. And you can just go, okay, well, what's Y if X equals three? So instead of X, I'm gonna put a three. So you input a three in there for the x value and you just solve that equation out. So you get this scenario where when x is three, y is seven. This is your input, this is your output, right? So you could pick another value, let's say if x equals negative four, well, y equals two times negative four plus one, y equals negative seven. So we get the point negative four comma negative seven. You can input any value you want for x, you get back a value for y, inputs, outputs. This is gonna come in uh, increasingly handy when you start talking what's called function notation. Don't freak out about this right now. You'll see a video on this later. Function notation, uh, particularly grade 11 and 12 too, we, we start calling everything a function. Um, we're working with functions, we use function notation. The x here is my input, and you can just imagine here, if I put an input in for x i get a y right so it's the same deal um, but you'll see that in more detail later so uh, domain and range a lot of times people muck up domain and range i don't really know why it's it's a relatively straightforward concept but i can uh, you know there's aspects to it that uh, you gotta wrap your brain around so domain 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 so over here what's the domain it has to do with all acceptable x values that exist on our relation. So if you just look at this example, I'm only going to do, I'll do C, okay? I just have a bunch of points. So I have negative two comma one. So where does that exist, right? That exists right there. I have one comma zero. I have three comma three. And I have one comma four. So what the domain is, is the domain is, any x value where you will find your graph. So it's gonna change when you don't have points. I'll see, I'll do a line example here in a minute. But in this case, imagine drawing vertical lines through your x-axis, right, like this. And where do you actually hit something? So boom, 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 I hit something right here, right? Because it's in my domain. So my domain in this case, for C, includes the value x equals negative two, but then also you can see x equals one and x equals three. So, because those are the only places I'm gonna be able to draw a vertical line and cross through my graph. That's what the domain means. If you can draw a vertical line and you hit your graph, it's in your domain. So I'm just gonna erase this for a sec, because just imagine if you had a line that extended infinitely in either direction, right? In this case, it doesn't matter where you draw that vertical line, you're always gonna hit your graph, even as that graph extends infinitely in either direction. So in that case, that would be an example where what we call, we call the domain all real numbers, or this funky little symbol looks like an I with an R after it means all real numbers. There'll be a short video just on domain and range, but so domain is all of the acceptable X values, and then range is all of your acceptable Y values. So in the case of our points here, we can use the same points that we did previous. I'm not gonna re-graph them, but you can see that it's just the Y values of your given points. So our range is gonna be here, one, zero, three, four. So why not put them in ascending order? All of those points are in my range. It's very rare that you just have a bunch of points uh, because if you have a continuous graph, 
your range becomes your domain range become more um, involved becomes bigger involved inequality symbols we'll see a couple examples here so what are the domain range of these two things so let's start domain first thing to consider is that this graph extends forever that way and forever that way now it might look like it's steep but it is moving at an outward trajectory forever and so is that so no matter where i'm at i can hit vertical line and as that graph extends i'm always going to be able to draw a vertical line it's just gonna hit it way way up there so in this case my domain is going to be all real numbers my range though i have a minimum point right i have a minimum point right here which means that my y values y values will be greater than or equal to zero. Anything greater than or equal to zero will be covered by my range, right? I can hit my graph, hit my graph, hit my graph, hit my graph. It's in my range. So in a circle though, in this next one over, you have leftmost points here. So you can see here we have a leftmost point here and we have a rightmost point here. Those are the boundaries of my domain because if I draw vertical lines, I can hit everything in between those, but nothing after those. So what that means is, what's my leftmost point? My leftmost point is negative 4, and x is anything greater than or equal to that, but it is also less than or equal to positive 4. So it's everything in between and equal to those outer boundaries. And then what's my range then? Well, what's my highest point? 4. What's my lowest point? Negative 4. So again, my range will cover everything in between there. So it's negative 4 positive 4, except this time it's not x, it's y. So you have a, a domain and a range that's restricted, but also contains a whole bunch of chunks in the middle. And then the last one here, again, this line extends infinitely that way and that way, which means in this case, your range is going to extend forever. It's going to work its way up, right, eventually, and down eventually. So your range is all real numbers. Your domain here well, we have a leftmost point, right? Furthest left my x goes is negative 2, and my x values are anything greater than or equal to that. So that is one way you can do the domain and range notation. That's the way I'm going to do the domain and range notation moving forward. Um, and there are going to be, uh, there is going to be a video on domain and range. So functions, what's a function if we've been talking about relations? Well, a function is just a special type of relation. Okay, so um, every relation or every function is a relation but not every relation is a function because a function is a special one and the way to determine is really easy there's a lot of uh, math jargon uh, you can say that every here every input in your domain has exactly one output in the range blah 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 and i'll explain that deeper in the as we go and it's in the workbooks but the big one is this everything's a relation and if it passes what's called the vertical line test it becomes a function so it means if you draw a vertical line anywhere through this graph you should only cross it once so you can see here i'm only crossing it once but here i'm crossing it twice so it means this is just a relation but these two will both graduate to become functions so it passes the vertical line test. Everything's a relation, but these two are, are also functions. They're more uh, specialized. Well then, a one-to-one -one function takes that a step further. So first you have to pass the vertical line test. So we already know these two did, right? After you pass the vertical line test, you pass the horizontal line test. So the horizontal line should also only cut it once. So the math uh, vocab for this is every input in the domain has exactly one output in the range and vice versa. The range has exactly one output in the domain. So in this case, this is just, let's go green here, this is just a function, does not pass the horizontal line test. This is a relation, doesn't pass the vertical line test. And this one passes both. So it is a one-to-one -one function. So that's what I mean with uh, like graduating. So a relation will graduate to the next level. So like uh, we talked about here, this one doesn't pass, right? So no graduation for you. You stay 
a relation. This one passes. Good. You are now a function. But you could check right away and say, does it pass horizontally? No. No graduation there. This one passes the vertical. Yay, you're a function. Let's check horizontal. Oh, you passed that too. You are cream of the crop. One to one function. So that's the best way to determine just visually. Does it pass those tests? If it passes those tests, you get to different levels. And there's more you can do with uh, one to one functions that you can't do with relations. Um, it just sort of condenses our vocabulary as we move forward. So just get a general understanding of this and how to graph um, linear equations because next section we're going to start graphing uh, non-linear, so curved lines. Great. Good job. Remember this relates to our section 2.1 on the website and uh, onward and upward.